Good morning, visual rhetoric. Uh, I decided I'd try something a little different, and it's easier this way so I can just hold it up to the camera. Uh, for our extra credit assignment, uh, I took a look at Persepolis, the Story of a Childhood by Marjani Satrapi. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Uh, it's a story told through uh, comic book style about her growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution in the late 70s through the early 80s. And I wanted to just go through and highlight a couple of pages, uh, some panels that demonstrate some of the things we learned in Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. Uh, some of the most common conventions that popped up to me after reading both of the books. Uh, one, the idea of closure. Uh, the other, the idea of space and time being the same thing. And the use of color or lack thereof. So I just have a couple of my fingers put into the couple pages I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to begin with page three, which is the first page. Um, it's the very beginning of the story, and I wanted to look at the bottom panel here. Sometimes the panels, oh, there we go, uh, they're split in half, so there are two that occupy 50% of the page. Sometimes they're into thirds, and sometimes they span the entire page. And this particular panel is about the very first uh, time Marjani has to wear the veil to school. And as you can see, the whole schoolyard, none of them really want to wear the veil. So when you go from left to right, you can see all the misuses of the veil that they're going through. So she's saying it's too hot out, but then you move from left to right. The one little girl saying, ooh, I'm a monster, and covering her face with it. One of them has lassoed another schoolmate and is saying giddy up and riding them like a horse. One of them is using to play jump rope. Um, <laughs> and it's it's interesting, the space and time, how it also works with the geometry of the building in the corner here. You can see we're sort of aligned with it, and then the corner goes off the page, and it adds that dimension of... You can sort of, as you're going up, it adds that perspective, and it's interesting how it's spatial and temporal. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead to uh, Marjani writes about how she, her parents won't let her demonstrate uh, against the army. And when she's explaining, her parents would go out and she could never join them. So I wanted to look at these two middle panels here. You can see the army, or my finger is here, and the revolutionaries on the right. Uh, interestingly, um, the army, they're in black and the revolutionaries are in white. They have guns. The revolutionaries are throwing stones. And what I like about this is how the army and the revolutionaries are sort of just carbon copies of each other. And they're stacked on top of one another to build this idea of it's just one big conglomeration against another. Uh, but also how they bleed off the panel. So then we're left to decide uh, just the closure of how frequently and the barrage of bullets facing revolutionaries the revolutionaries lobbing stones against them that's not actually depicted and we're sort of left to do that work uh so moving along uh let's see okay so here we go here's a frame uh that sort of captures movement in the middle frames over here uh, Marjani, she actually sneaks out with her neighbor, friend, and caretaker to the demonstrations, and her mother finds out. So she's wondering where they were, and then she realizes that they were out demonstrating, and they could have very well been put in harm's way. So she has an upswing to smack the, uh, the caretaker, and you can see on the following frame, she's bringing her hand back down on Marjani's level to slap her face. And you can see on the caretaker here the imprint of her smack that she had just delivered. So in these two frames, we get the motion. Just these two lines here, just upswing, backswing. Let's see, moving along. So then toward the middle of the book, we get into, uh, Marjani's a little bit older, so her parents have finally allowed her to come along to the demonstrations. The revolution is still going on. Uh, and in this one panel here, we can see she's 
handing out flyers and oh, there we go everyone all the other protesters are in black and she is in white to sort of single her out from the crowd and then again we have her and her parents sort of realizing the danger that they're in when suddenly things got nasty it says and we see this sea of people sort of just kind of bundled on top of each other while her and her parents are attempting to flee to safety and we go from the attackers to somebody getting caught in the crowd so getting bludgeoned by them and on the very edge of the frame we have her and her parents escaping and at the bottom oh gosh it's reversed so it's hard to line this up sorry so this this these two panels are particularly interesting because now we have this woman here, she is being stabbed, and unlike in the previous panels where all the demonstrators were wearing black, this woman's pants are white, and they're white just to contrast. Here's where the color comes in. So we have the actor here stabbing this woman in the leg and through her white pants, and we can see the drops of blood lying into the puddle on the floor. Um, so we have the actor the recipient, and then the reaction in the very corner. So again, it's that flow of time. And we have the spiky speech bubbles to indicate there's a sort of immediacy and danger. So let me get there. Okay. What does the frame say? That was our last demonstration. Every man for himself, her her Marjani screaming as she rides piggyback on her dad. And you can see they're in the forefront of the frame. They're escaping you can tell by the shadow they're casting that they have escaped this smaller. Um, somebody's getting pummeled back there. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now this is page 132. Marjani's a little bit older. Uh, she's getting into the punk, hip-hop kind of scene. But the only problem is that that style of music is strictly forbidden um, by her elders and her teachers. So we have this top frame here. She sort of kind of go, has to pick up these cassettes of these artists she's into through these shady black, black market style vendors, all wearing these large overcoats to hide the goods they're selling. So from left to right, you can see she's walking, and each one of them's speaking the name of the artist that they're carrying. So we get that dimension of time across the entire page with each step she takes. Each vendor sort of whispering into her ear what they have to sell. And these two frames in the middle I found really interesting is that, so she says she bought two tapes, Kin Wild and Camel. So she, the vendor, he sort of does a quick double take to make sure nobody's watching. And to demonstrate that, Satrapi, she gives him a sort of symmetrical double face and she does the same to herself with just these two, again, two lines just to demonstrate motion so that in one frame we get this. And then also the background's in black so that it's sort of like they're trying to do this under the cover of darkness. But I just think you can tell by the furrowed brow on both of them that they're doing something. They know they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing and they're trying to be as cautious as they can about it. Uh, on the next page, you'll see she gets caught, and she almost gets arrested, but um, I just have one more page, I believe. I sort of lost it. Uh, here we go. So, a little bit later in the story, this is page 142, um, there's a strike, an attack in her neighborhood, and uh, one of, she returns home, and she finds that uh, her neighbor's home has been demolished. And she says uh, she was looking for her neighbors to make sure they're okay. But um, this reminded me of Ingushetia from I Live Here, the way the frames, the uh, artists would just sort of draw the sorrow and the expressions of the women there. So she says here, she's covering her mouth, you can kind of see the tears uh, building in her eyes. The bracelet was still attached to ellipses, I don't know what. So then it just goes to this empty frame where she's covering her eyes. 
And then what's really interesting here is it goes to this black panel here, and the text says, no scream in the world could have relieved my suffering and anger. And we don't, even though the previous two panels were this demonstration of loss and suffering, uh, this following one, we put in the closure of, because we can't understand her suffering, I'm sh none of us were there other than her, and I guess she couldn't even put into words just how much pain she was in. So we just imagine it. And again, the use of color, or the lack thereof, this contrast of just black and white, um, that comes through there. Very powerful stuff. So that's basically all I wanted to show you. Um, there's a movie. I'm interested in seeing it. This was a fascinating read. I believe it's on Netflix. And uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching.